What is going on everybody? It's Alex here coming back at you with another video. Today we are doing the Los Angeles Rams, my hometown team. If you guys want to learn more about me, I'm going to be doing a video once this series is over explaining what my favorite teams are and why. Uh, Keon like boldly asked me in the comments uh, to unveil like why I actually liked every single team that I do. And I mean, if you guys want to see it, I'll put it out. So yeah. Let's look over the Rams really quick. Uh, Los Angeles Rams, it's kind of embarrassing to call them my home team. Uh, they went to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. They had such a strong run, and they folded like a lawn chair. Well, they put up three points in the entire like in the entire uh, game. Like, ugh. You know what I mean? So, not very good, but, I mean, sometimes like the, you can't always win every single game. You know what I mean, guys? So, slight problem, but the Rams, they've been just going downhill ever since. As soon as they lost Robert uh, Roger Saffold, I was like, mm, this team has kind of lost its spark. Like, this offensive line is was the whole entire reason why the Rams got to the Super Bowl. Their defense and their O-line. The only two reasons. Everybody thought it was Goff. Everybody thought it was Gurley. But we've seen over the past, like, over the past year, um, year or two, that... The Rams, without their offensive line, are pretty inept. We saw this in Jared Goff's rookie year. I saw it personally when uh, when Los Angeles played Arizona here in LA for their first year. Literally have a snap showing, like, thank God they just got to 100 total yards for the game. Really embarrassing. But it's like, it's you can't run an offense behind nothing to protect your quarterback or your running back. If you don't give your quarterback time, you can't throw it. If you don't give the running back time, you can't run through anything. So, um, this team right now is royally fucked. Uh, the team, like even Washington, one of two wins was because of the fact that Los Angeles does not have a good offensive line. So, I mean, it's, it's just embarrassing, guys. Uh, you know, on the defensive side, they're... They're all right. I mean, they had some amazing pieces. Jalen Ramsey, love the fact that he's on the team, gave up way too much for him. Now that they're in rebuild mode, they're probably like, fuck, we shouldn't have given up first, two first-round picks. But at least you have, like, possibly the best corner in the NFL. Uh, I mean, the secondary apart from that, it's okay. I mean, there's, there's just nothing really to scream about. John Johnson's pretty solid as a safety, but... Taylor Rapp, great pick. A couple, like what, last year? I think it was last year. You think it was a second round pick last year. Um, he was a solid pick as well, but there's not really the game changers that was there. Like, keep to leave Marcus Peters. And then you had like Corey Littleton uh, playing. And then you had Ndamukin Sue And like LaMarcus Joyner. Like all these guys made a huge difference. And most of them are gone. If not all of them, I'm pretty sure... Almost all the guys that I mentioned are gone. Like, you have Aaron Donald, possibly the best defensive player in the league. If Like, people can even make arguments for possibly all time. Like, he is that much of a beast. But uh, we're, we're not going to go there right now. We're not going to go there. Lawrence Taylor is my favorite NFL player of all time, for the record. But regardless, um, they, they still have... Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald. You have somebody in the secondary, somebody rushing the passer slash stuff in the run. So they have pieces, but not enough. Like, their linebacker core is pretty freaking barren. And, like, still, they, they're just lacking. So we're going to see how this works out, but the offensive line is the biggest issue here. So week one, Dallas uh, at LA is a Sunday night game. This is going to be embarrassing, guys. Uh, Dallas's defensive front is 10 times superior to LA's offensive line. And then Dallas's corners are comparable to LA's wide receiver core. If we're just going to be honest here, guys, losing Brandon Cooks was a great move for the Rams and a horrible move. So a great move because, A, they don't have the cap. And B, they got a second round pick out of it. They kind of need that. But at the same time, it's a bad move because they don't have any other real weapons. Like, Yes, Cooper Cup is a solid wide receiver. He's really talented. And they got Van Jefferson, somebody who's very talented as well. But he's injury-ridden. That's why I didn't put him in my top 10, top 15. So, 
I don't know. I don't really know. The team, the running back is right now Cam Akers. And Cam Akers was like the number one running back coming out of his high school class. And he went to Florida State. And then he just didn't do that much there. I don't think that's a second round pick. But, hey, I mean, if he works out, he works out. I think he has a lot of potential. I put him as a fifth round type of guy just because of the fact it's like, yo, you had all this hype and didn't do shit. So, you never know. But Los Angeles did not invest anything in their offensive line this last draft. So, yeah. Uh, their Dallas is just way too superior. Way too superior. Next week, LA goes to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, I would agree, is going to win this one. The defensive line there is insane. I mean, you got Fletcher Cox, Derek Barnett, and Brandon Graham. Like, it's pretty freaking good. And if I'm not mistaken, they have Javon Hargrave as well from the Steelers. Like, it's pretty damn defense, pretty damn solid defensive front. And now you have Darius Slay who can lock up Cooper Cup. So, really, Los Angeles doesn't have much to work with here. Next week, LA goes to Buffalo. This is another easy one, guys. Buffalo is taking this one. Corn, the secondary is really freaking solid. Tredavious White, Jordan Poyer. Micah Hyde, really solid. Linebacking group, like you have Terrell, no, you have Tremaine Edmonds, who is young, fast, agile, and I mean, I'm pretty, like you have Matt Milano there too, he's a pretty solid guy as well, so like they have great core there, and then their defensive line, I mean you got like, I'm pretty sure they still have Shaq Lawson, that might not be true, he might be on the Dolphins, but um, they still have Ed Oliver in there, They still they still have pieces, Jerry Hughes as well. So this team, they have the pieces to just complete demolish L.A. And then on the offensive side, I mean, they're they're fine. They're, there's nothing that's really horrible about the team. So we'll see what happens there. Um, week four, New York versus L.A. New York's known for their defensive line, man. Like, Dave Gettleman, all he does is draft defensive line. And they brought in Leonard Williams. They have Dexter Lawrence. They, they have B.J. Hill. They have pieces there that are really solid. New York has a great defensive line. And LA's offensive line is just nothing. You can't win when you don't have an offensive line. This is just the thing. And the same thing goes for Washington and LA, but even worse. Washington has an insanely great defensive line. Problem is they're just lacking pretty much everywhere else. Yes, they have they have Kendall Fuller and they have uh, Landon Collins back there. But still, uh, this team like they they have they have needs everywhere else but the defensive line is the only reason why I can see them just demolishing LA. Next week LA goes to San Francisco. Guys, I'm going this again. San Francisco is beating LA. Uh, I mean this one is it's it just continues being like a crescendo. Like New York has a great offensive line, Washington has an amazing defensive line, and San Francisco even more. So, no real need to explain that one. And then even like just adding like fire to like like adding extra fuel to this fire. Chicago, same type of scenario. You have freaking like you have Khalil Mack, and then Akeem Hicks. It's just too much, too much firepower for LA. Finally, LA is going to Miami, and Miami's beating them. <laughs> Miami's beating them, uh, dude. I got so much shit for letting Miami beat Seattle, but Miami, Miami in Miami is like Denver and Denver. It doesn't matter how crap they are. It is just such a weird freaking environment that it's just like, whoa, like what the hell? It's like in hockey, the San Jose Sharks in like the Shark Tank. Like what the fuck? Like they are really damn good. So it's it's just like I mean LA also they have, they have a defensive line. They have a great corner core now too. Like their secondary is freaking solid. Too bad they didn't keep on like hold on to Mika Fitzpatrick, right? Um, they have a future in Tua. They have Austin Jackson. They did a great. They did a pretty damn good job in the draft. Next week, Seattle is going to beat LA fully rested. I mean, Russell Wilson. This is the only game I could see LA like sneaking in a win, um, like for like the good teams, but because Seattle's offensive line is pretty crap. But still, I mean, it's just it's just not good for LA this year. They really need to just revamp. So next week, LA Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay's defense is underrated. Their offense is overpowered. It's just that's it's just a shit show, guys. The next week, San Francisco at LA, fully rested. We're giving it to San Fran. Um, yeah, we're we're just gonna give it to San Fran. There's no real need to explain this. Already did explain it before, but even worse because they're fully rested. Uh, Arizona at LA, the most underrated team in the NFL right now. Super Bowl contenders this year. 
watch the video. I mean, probably if if we have any more subscribers, which we just got to 35. Huge jump. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, it's like, you guys need to watch that. So, like, Arizona's kind of like my team this year where it's like, I think that they're going to be big. They have a shit ton of potential. They have Super Bowl potential. The next week, New England goes to L.A. Thursday night. L.A. is going to steal this game. New England, they lost seven pieces on their defensive front. Uh, just the defense in general. That is not good. That is not good. And I don't. I think Jarrett Stidham is a great excuse to lose and tank for a great quarterback. Call me an idiot. Say Belichick won't do that his first year out of Tom Brady. And without Tom Brady, I would agree that he probably doesn't want to do that. But still, I think that that's the scenario that needs to happen. So, very interesting. I think LA is going to pull one right there. And they're going to beat them. And you know what? New York, I had them beating the Seattle Seahawks. They're not beating them this time. I mean, they're not beating another NFC, uh, NFC West, God, NFC West team. And LA is going to beat the Jets. Like I said, Sam Darnold has a game where he just defeats a team that he should never defeat and then loses to a team that he should easily beat. It's, people are like, oh my God, like Greeny. God, he like literally gets hard over thinking about Sam Darnold. It's just, it's that's a no-go, guys. So the next week, um, L.A. going to Seattle. You're in Seattle. If L.A. had a better offensive line, like these games could be possibly both L.A.'s way. Literally, the offensive line would completely shift a lot of these games. Fact is, L.A. just doesn't give a shit. It's embarrassing. Embarrassing as an L.A. Uh, LA resident. So, well, uh... And finally, Arizona, they're going to be 12-3. Uh, and three. They're going to be wanting to steal possibly a first to seed in the NFC and get that one bye week because this year, one, buy, one, one team gets a bye. So that's a big thing. They're going to come into L.A. L.A. has nothing to win. And, I mean, they have, every, they have nothing to lose, but they also have nothing to win. So it's like Arizona is something. And they're going to be coming out screaming. And Arizona insanely talented team is going to finish off the los angeles rams so let me know what you guys think saint thank you guys so much for watching again 35 subs awesome can't wait for more let's get that to 40 and then on up thank you guys so much again and i'll see you on the far side